Hi again, my name is Sandra and I am a knitwear and crochet designer. Welcome to my channel. This video is part of a larger series in special crochet techniques. Uh, these are techniques that will help you take your crochet skills to the next level. So they go a little bit beyond the basics. Today we're going to talk about how to convert mosaic charts from a knitting pattern or maybe something that you found on the internet or something that you made yourself into crochet charts for mosaic crochet. Now this adaptation is quite easy to do, uh, it doesn't take much work but it's definitely necessary to do to be able to work it in crochet, uh, mosaic crochet. Now there are different versions of mosaic crochet, uh, however all of them use the same charts, okay? The charts work the same way, it's just the way that you actually work the chart. So you have a mosaic crochet that is worked uh, only on the right side and only with one row per color. So um, if you see here, this is my Momo project bag. I've shown it to you before. Um, this is mosaic crochet where it only works on the right side of your work. So it works better in rounds. Okay, you can find the free pattern for this in the blog. I will put it in the in the description box. And uh, also the video is up here for you guys to check that out, how to work the charts in this way. Now there's also mosaic crochet that is worked flat. So you have two rows per color, so you come and go. You can also work that in rounds, but the idea is that you're able to come and go and you don't have to cut your ends your yarn at the end of every row if you want to work it flat. So this looks a little bit like this. This is my Brick Road coasters and Brick Road um, tea towel or placemat, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and um, this looks really, really pretty as well. And um, But it works a little bit better flat, well, better than the other one. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to convert a chart that you find on the internet uh, or something that you make yourself to be able to do this with crochet because knitting works a little bit differently, the chart, than crochet. All right, so uh, before we start, I just wanted to do a little note about uh, things that you find on the internet. So if you Google mosaic crochet charts or just mosaic charts, you will find loads of things on the internet, but most of the charts that you will find are from Barbara Walker. Uh, she wrote a book with loads of really, really pretty mosaic charts that are used for knitting. And, uh, and they're all free on the internet. And I feel quite guilty sometimes because I have used them before, um, but I always try to give credit to her work or I try to modify it as much as possible, you know, so use that as an idea, as a base, but try to modify it. So if you're a designer and you're watching this and you want to use one of her charts, I think that's great, but just make sure that you give her credit, either that, give her credit in your pattern or simply modify it enough that it's a different thing, right? But if you're just at home and you want to use one of those charts in one of your own projects just to, you know, add a little bit of color to it, then feel free to use whatever you find on the internet, right? Uh, the one I'm going to show you today is the herringbone. This came from the internet. This is from Barbara Walker. And it is the same chart that I used in this pattern. So if you buy the, the pattern, you will see that I give her credit in it, also in the blog. Um, but I did adapt it a bit for crochet, right? So I will show you how to convert this, which is what I downloaded from the internet, into a usable crochet chart. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is the chart that I told you guys about that I downloaded from the internet. The first thing that we need to understand about the charts is about the colors, right? So each row is one color. And as you can see here, uh, it tells you which color they are. So one and two are black, then white, black, white, black, white, black, white. Obviously you can replace that with whatever color you want to use. Um, okay, and also this column over here is a mirror of this column over here. That is so that you work the repeat section inside their lines as many times as you want. And then on the last one, you can close it off with this one so that it is even. Uh, that's why 
we do multiples of eight stitches plus three. So the charts obviously differ in sizes depending on what you want to do. Now, the first thing that we need to do to modify this for crochet is to make a base for the chart. Now, I like to start with a dark color. I think it makes it look a little bit prettier like you see here. So I have a light color and then my first chart color is the black one. That's why what I do is repeat the first row at the top. So we're going to do something like this. I normally would do this on Excel, um, but because I don't know how to show you my computer, <laughs> I'm doing it by hand. So what I'm going to do is simply repeat whatever is happening on this first row over here. Something like this, right? And in this case, this first row now is going to become our base row. The base row is worked differently from the rest of the rows. Uh, the base row is only done the first time that you work the chart. On following repeats, you would not work this base row. You would only work this new one that you've made. So it's a copy of the base one and uh, that will keep the design even. All right. So now what we need to do is figure out where the double crochets are going to go. Now double crochets are used to cover up the color behind them because you only work one color per row. Like for example, the first row, right? This is white, but since this row is worked in black, I need something to cover this black, this black stitch. So I will use a double crochet. So that's how you know where to work a double crochet. So you do it row by row. How can I cover this one? By putting a double crochet right here. And we use an X to mark a double crochet. That's it. Now this row is a white row, right? So how can I cover the white on this row if it's black? So this stitch is black. But it's a white row, so in order to cover that, I will use a double crochet. Here is a black row, a black stitch, and a white row to cover that. I use a double crochet. Black stitch in a white row, double crochet. Okay, we do this on every row. I have a white stitch on a black row, so the double crochet from, comes from the top. This double crochet will cover this whole space. Again, the next one, it's a white row, so I have a black stitch that needs to be covered. Double crochet there. I'm not sure if you can see the double crochets I'm making. Let me see if I can... I'll make them in red so that it's easier to see. I normally would just make an X, but since it's black, you can't really see it. Okay, uh, then let's go to the next row. So now this black row, I have one stitch that needs to be covered. So I put my X at the top, on top of that one, so that this one is covered. Remember the X is a double crochet, so it's going to be longer. It's going to be attached to the previous row of the same color which means that this double crochet is going to be worked on this stitch. And by doing that, I'm going to cover that black stitch underneath. All right, I hope this is making sense. Now on this row, it's a white row, I have some black stitches to cover them. I go to the top and I make an X on those. Same this row, I have one white stitch to cover it. I go on top, make an X there. Now on this row, it's a white row. I have some black stitches to cover them. I make X's at the top. And that's it. That's all you need to know um, to modify a chart from knitting into crochet. So when you work it, now you know that on the X's, you will make double crochets 
and all the other stitches are going to be single crochets. Now for the this kind of crochet which is worked in rounds and only single row per color, um, this one is worked on the back loop and the front loop of your stitches. So all the single crochets are going to be back loops and all the double crochets are going to be front loops. However, on um, this one is work normal single crochets and normal double crochets and that one's a little bit more complicated because you do need to use chains on rows that have a different color. So I would really recommend watching the video for this one so that you understand how to work it. But now that you have a chart, this is how to modify it. You have your X's for your double crochets and you have your base row. Now just to clarify, now that this is the base row, this row is going to be called zero, let's say I like to call it zero, in which case the other rows will have a different name, right? Uh, the reason why I have numbers on both sides is because charts like this one, this kind of mosaic crochet is worked on two ways, right? But if you're going to work it like this one, which is in rounds, single row per color, then you don't need to do two, right? In that case, it would be called differently. In that case, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it depends the kind of crochet that you wanna work. That's the name that you would uh, place next to the rows. All right, another note to tell you, when you're working in rounds, um, like in the Momo project bag, the extra columns on the sides are not necessary anymore. You can have them there to tell you which color to work on each row. However, you only want to work what's inside the chart. So it would be what's inside these lines. Okay, that's because when you work in circles, you're able to complete the chart every time. So you don't need this extra row and you don't need um, these marker rows to tell you which color to use. So when you're working in rounds, forget about these columns. So that's how you adapt a knitting mosaic chart for mosaic crochet. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you find it helpful and that you actually do use it in your crochet at home. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can help me out and also get notified whenever there are new videos uploaded. I also have a podcast that goes on and I'm going to be making more of these as I can. Um, also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures there with updates on new patterns and new designs and things like that. And uh, you can find all my links in the bio. And uh, yeah, like, comment and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.